Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So in just four months, we'll know just how high the next increase will be for all social security beneficiaries. Right now, it looks like it's going to be right around $1,200. We are going to be going over those numbers. Plus, after Trump's conviction, is that going to hurt him in the election? Is that going to help him? Or is it really not going to change anything at all? We're going to be going over the most recent polling numbers with that as well. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm, and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $200 in free stock or $200 in free cash, in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Robinhood. All you have to do is once you click on that link, it's just sign up for a free account and then simply link your bank account. You do not even have to make an opening deposit. At that point in time, Robinhood will be sending you one free stock worth all the way up to $200. And if you'd really just have the cash, all you have to do is once you receive the free stock, it's just sell for what it's worth and then transfer the cash value right back to your bank account. Okay, so diving right into our lead story of today's video. And well, Trump, of course, is now officially a convicted felon. 34 different counts in the state of New York. And of course, his trial, uh, his sentencing is going to be next month in July, uh, just a few days before uh, the Republican Party announces who uh, their uh, president is going to be, which of course is going to be Trump himself. And while the majority of independent voters have come out and they believe that Trump did receive a fair trial in the state of New York. And most independents also believe that Trump should now uh, back out of the race now that he's been convicted of these crimes. At the same time, we also have the majority of voters where you know a, a good chunk of voters, even Democrats, saying they believe that Biden should not be running either. So uh, both kind of fall sort of in the same pit there. But we're gonna look at this polling here, look at the most recent polling and see exactly how that's potentially impacted the race between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. So we can look at the most, most recent polling from yesterday, Tuesday, June 4th. We can see that in one of the polls by Morning Consult, Trump was leading by one point over Joe Biden. Then we have another poll by Rasmussen Reports. Trump leads that one by five points. We have another one by Rasmussen Reports where it's actually we have Trump versus Biden versus Kennedy versus West versus Stein. So we're throwing all the third party and independent candidates in there. And that one Trump also leads by five points. You can see that Joe Biden currently has a job approval rating of just 44%. And then in another poll by Data for Progress, he has an even worse approval rating of just 42%. So things aren't really looking all that good for Joe Biden there. It doesn't seem like the conviction on Trump's behalf has really hurt him in the polls. And we can actually pull up these battleground states because these are the states that are really going to impact the election. Because again, we know states like California and New York are for sure going to be voting for Biden. We know states like Texas and Florida are for sure going to be voting for Donald Trump. But what about these swing states? What about Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania? Michigan, which way are those states going to swing? And we can see up on the screen right now, Trump completely sweeps all those swing states. Wisconsin, Trump is barely leading in that state according to polling. He's leading Arizona by four points. He's leading Georgia by 4.8 points. He's leading Michigan by half of a point. He's leading Pennsylvania by 2.3 points, leading North Carolina by 5.3 points, and he's leading Nevada by a massive five, point four points and in 2020 he lost the majority of those states so if he holds that lead and actually ends up winning all those states this could absolutely be a landslide for trump in 2024 coming up in just five months away we do have the election coming up but leave your thoughts and comments below who are you picking if the election was held today is the conviction does that impact who you're going to be voting for, or did it really matter for you either way? Now, in some other news, of course, in regards to Social Security, we actually had the budget chief coming out and saying that immigration, the immigration surge, could actually add $1 trillion to the Social Security coffers. So according to The Hill, 
Dr. Philip Swaggle, the director of the Congressional Budget Office, told lawmakers during a Tuesday hearing that, quote, the immigration surge that we project from 2021 to 2026 will result in about $1 trillion in additional revenue over a 10-year period. Members of the House Ways and Means Subcommittee on Social Security convened to examine the current and projected financial status of the dwindling Social Security Trust Fund as the program hurdles towards potential cuts upwards of 21% on individual benefits by 2035. And the House will go through the appropriations process, which will once again push lawmakers into debate over Social Security funding this month. While Democrats and Republicans continue to war over two solutions to the program's waning funds, tax increases on the wealthy, or benefit cuts to the program, a third consideration emerged during the meeting, immigration. And of course, a big problem right now for Social Security is the fact that the money being the money right now in the trust fund and the future money that's going to be flowing into the trust fund from taxes on workers and taxes on people receiving Social Security benefits, there's not going to be enough money coming into the trust fund each and every year to pay everyone out 100% of the benefits. That's why they're considering cuts upwards of 26% within the next 10 years if nothing is done to save the program to make it so more money is flowing into the program. That's because over the years, of course, people are having fewer and fewer kids. So the ratio of workers to people receiving benefits has been getting lower and lower every single year because people were going from having like to say four, five, six kids, and now they're only having one kid, two kids, or maybe no kids at all. So we don't have enough workers. And well, it looks like maybe one of their solutions is to bring workers, younger people from other countries into this country to, to you know, have younger people working, paying social security taxes, and that way keeping the program solvent for a longer period of time. So that could possibly be a solution. Leave your thoughts and comments below on that. Are you on board with bringing more immigrants into the country to keep the program solvent for a longer period of time? Now, in some other news, of course, we do have the announcement of the next social security increase coming up in just four months away in the middle of October. And coming up in just a few days, we are going to have another projection of what that increase is going to be. That's because if we look at the schedule of release for the consumer price index, we can see released on June 12th, that's going to be one week away, we are going to have the inflation information for the month of May. And last month, we had the latest projection, which is going to be a 2.6% increase. We're going to be going over what that would mean for everyone, whether you receive SSI benefits, if you're on disability, or if you're a Social Security retiree. So if you look up on the screen here, we can look the right now the max benefit for workers retiring at the full retirement age this year in 2024 is $3,822 per month. If we do indeed get that 2.6% increase, that's going to boost their benefits up to $3,921 per month. That would be a $100 per month increase or $1,200 per year. Then as far as SSI individuals go, this year the max benefit for SSI individuals is $943 per month, although most people receive a good bit less than the $943. However, if we do have a 2.6% increase next year, that would mean that SSI individuals could earn all the way up to $967 per month. Then moving on to all retired workers, this is pretty much what the average retiree is receiving this year in 2024. Right now they are receiving $1,907 per month on average. Of course, if we do have the 2.6% increase, that's going to boost their average benefit up to $1,956 per month. That's right around $50 per month or $600 over the course of a year. And then as far as disabled workers, this year in 2024, the average disabled worker is receiving $1,537 per month. If we do have the 2.6% increase, that's going to boost their benefit up to $1,000. $576 per month on average. So again, these are just averages. These are not going to be set in stone until October, the middle of October. If we look at the dates up on the screen, once again, that date is going to be October 10th. That's when we're going to have the inflation data from the month of September. And then we're going to have the third quarter data, the, the complete third quarter data, the July, August, and September months, which we will be able to compare to the third quarter data of last year. 
and whatever that's gone up by is what the official cost of living adjustment is going to be. But leave your thoughts and comments below. Would you be happy with these increases? Do you think that increase would be enough to keep up with inflation? Leave your thoughts and comments below on that. But that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.